Douglas County Hospital. Where? Hold on. Wilson. A shooting. Two men. Milton and Bay. Right. 758. Here we go, Doc. Hi, Lefty. Hey, Lou. Okay. Well, you know, okay. I'm looking for you. Dr. Smith, call operator. Hello, Brooks. Good evening, Doctor. Dr. Smith, call operator two. Dr. Thomas, wanted in surgery. Brooks! Dr. Thomas wanted well, to Well, how does it feel? The reaction hasn't set in yet. Like a woman who's just had a baby, I won't believe it until <laughs> I see it. I hear it was pretty tough. It was for me. But then I don't think state boards can be tough enough. Well, that's one thing doctors agree on. After they pass the examination, they all want it made tougher for the next one. Congratulations, Doc. Same to you, Eddie. Anytime you need any help in pathology. I'll look you up. <laughs> Well, it looks like a busy night. The chance to polish up your hem stitching. That's what tickles my wife. <laughs> when I tell her I sew people up, she wanted me work on an old sock. <laughs> I'll bet she's happy you finished a year at County, huh? I suppose so. That part of it hasn't been much fun. It's no good a man's wife supporting him, his mother, and the rest of the family. Well, it's over now. Dr. Wharton, call prison ward. Dr. Wharton, call prison ward. <laughs> Dr. Wharton. Oh, I see. Well, Brooks will cover. Thank you. One of the interns in the prison ward is reported sick. You take over until he gets back. Right. But Dr. Wharton, I've applied to stay on here another year. Junior resident? Why? Because I think it's more important than a few extra dollars, a little easier living. I've got a lot to learn. Well, you'll always have a lot to learn. I don't mean it just that way. I'm not sure of myself yet, in many ways. I think I need a little more time than the others. I'll be happy to have you with me for another year. I was hoping you'd say that. I think that if I left you now, I'd never again find anyone as considerate and interested. My interest in you, Brooks, is no greater than in any other good doctor on my service. Good night. Hello? Prison ward, Brooks. You on your way? As soon as I get my whites on. Be right up. Dr. Billings, call Ward 7. Dr. Billings, call Ward 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try and make right over there. Right there. That's the window, right there. Hold it, Lefty. All the way up tonight, Lefty, I'm a prison ward. You mind going down? Someone's leaning on emergency, right? What about that new exam you had to take? I thought you was a regular doctor already. State board? Everybody's got to take it, so you can get your license to practice. Well, the boys are saying it's just for colored doctors. Well, you can tell the boys it's for all doctors. I bet they laid it on you. No more than anybody else. They don't even ask your name. They give you a number. They look at your number. They know. They got ways of knowing. Oh, why don't you quit? What's it about? For the prison ward. Shot in the leg, both of them. I caught them sticking up a gas station. A couple of two for a nickel tough guy. <sighs> hey, officer, will you bend down for a minute? I want to polish a badge. You sure you hit this one in the leg only? Right over the knee, one shot. And what's it to you? 
Clean that up. Where's your mop? Take him away. <laughs> hey, Mac, I thought this was a hospital. You got mixed up. We're at the Cotton Club. How you doing, Johnny? Not, not too bad. No, no, I'm over here, Johnny. Not too bad. Ah, slug in the leg don't mean a thing. We'll be out of here in a week. A week, is it? I'll make bookets for two years or more. Right, for how right, much, yeah. Big Mouth? The Biddle brothers, look at him. Ray, he's the king of Beaver Canal. Yeah, he's beat up more women and old people than anybody. Such bright boys. You don't figure a cop also knows a gas station's a setup in the rain. I pop Sisson through the window, and he drops. Then this one, he gets hysterical or something, he runs toward me instead of his car. Then when he sees me, he turns around and runs into the pump. Then he misses me with a bullet, and I hit him with one. Will you tell me something about your brother? Sure, sure. What would you like to know? Has he ever been confused before in his sense of direction? Or maybe his sense of touch? Oh, well, let me see. Every time Beaver Canal went over to clean up nigger town, Johnny knew just what direction it was. You shut up. Of course, he could have just smelled where to go. Shut up, shut up. You're talking to a doctor. A doctor? Him? Lie back and lie still. You're in my charge. Who's your friends, Kowalski? Public enemies one and two. I'm Dr. Brooks. Yeah, they said you'd be up. Your first time here, isn't it, Doc? That's right. Have an empty room? Number five. Number five. All right, let's get them in there right away. What, you want to be booking them first? I'd like to turn them over. I think it's important to examine them first, him in particular. OK. I don't want him. I want a white doctor. We'll turn the lights out, and you won't know the difference. Haven't I got any rights? No. Will you be needing some instruments? You keep the cases locked? This ain't no maternity ward, Doc. Just get their pants off. Don't touch the dressings. I'll do that myself. Now, there's a gadget I've always wondered about. What are you going to do, wrap something around his leg? It's for examining the interior of the eyes. But they got shot in the leg. All righty, doctor. Thank you. I gave him cigarettes, OK? No. What are you doing to him? Just try to hold your head like this. Don't do it, Johnny. Don't do what he says. What's a big idea? What are you going to do now? Look, I'm trying to help your brother. Why don't you just shut up? You watch yourself, black boy. Watch how you talk to me. Just shut up. Keep looking up at the ceiling. Attaboy.
Hey, Doc. I don't recall anyone using that thing before. You gonna shoot something in his eye? Spinal tap. Spinal tap? Checking the amount of pressure on the brain. First the eyes, now the spine. Kowalski, you sure you shot these guys in the leg? You ever seen this doctor before? No. Then maybe you better check. No, I know we got one of them in the house. This must be him. Just rest easy, boy. You help me so as I can help you. Keep your legs in the same position. Now, just rest easy. Doc, don't hurt him. Don't do nothing to Johnny. He didn't do nothing to you. He didn't even say anything. I was the only one, remember, Doc? But I was out of my mind, you know, getting shot and all. Doc, leave Johnny alone. Leave him alone. One of y'all to go in and see what's happening. When a doctor wants an orderly, he'll send for one. Well, just in case, maybe he. Somebody stop him! He's killing John! Somebody stop him! Stop him! Stop him! Everything all right, doctor? He killed him! He killed him! That dirty nigger killed him! You shut up. Anything wrong, doc? He's dead. He killed him! He killed him, I tell you, I saw him! He took it out on Johnny. He wanted it to be me, but he took it out on Johnny. I'll get you for this, you black rat. If they hang me, I'll get you for it. Johnny. 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 Oh, Johnny. <laughs> for a symptom like this to be significant, it should have an historical basis. That's true. But the accumulation of symptoms, his confused sense of direction running right into the policeman, the changes in his optic discs, his increased spinal fluid... Brooks, I'm not ruling out your diagnosis of brain tumor. I'm merely indicating other possibilities. What other possibilities? Well, there isn't too much you can determine from the outside of a cadaver. There is a possibility that I killed him, isn't there? Don't be a fool. That I was careless in the spinal tap. That his brother's Negro baiting got me down. I don't want to ever hear you say anything like that again. You're a capable doctor. You were the doctor in charge. You did what you thought right, and there's an end to it. Dr. Warden. What would you have done? Probably exactly what you did. But you don't agree he had a brain tumor? Well, not to the exclusion of other possibilities. How can I? A man was shot in the leg. He bled freely. He ran. He fought with the policeman. He was forcibly overcome. When you first saw him, he was gasping for breath in shock. Yeah, a possible blood clot to the lung. A possibility? There are a half dozen more. Is there anything else I should have done? Well, that still depends upon what was the matter with him. And when they go out that fast... No, I was right. I know I was right. I've got to prove it. I want an autopsy. And you're entitled to it. Unfortunately, this is one state which does not insist on an autopsy in all cases of traumatic death. We can't do a thing without permission of a family. It's the family I've got to convince. The brother? Uh, call me a murderer, said I murdered his brother in cold blood. Every time anybody dies in a county hospital, somebody yells murder. But it's not the same when they yell it at me. It's got to be. You're a doctor. They're not yelling at the doctor, they're yelling at the nigger. I've got to have that autopsy. Who's that man? I don't know. Who is that man? Him? He's another brother, George Biddle. He's deep and dumb. He come up about five minutes ago. 
What's he doing here? Oh, he asked downstairs about his brothers, and they sent him up. I'll let him stick around. He wanted to claim the body in case you said it was okay to release it. Well, it's not okay. Get him out of here. Louis, get the dummy out. I'm Dr. Wharton, chief medical resident of this hospital. All right, Doc. Your brother had no right to be here. Communication with prisoners is forbidden except by direct permission. Well, I'm sure George didn't mean no harm. He's just a poor, deaf, and dumb guy. And, well, he was kind of broken up about Johnny. Him and Johnny was always very close. That's what he was telling me, Doc. How he misses Johnny. Now that Johnny's gone. I understand you created quite a rumpus when Dr. Brooks was doing his best to save your brother's life. If you give us any more trouble, you'll be put under restraint. Is that clear? Yeah, Doc. Dr. Brooks is in charge here, and you're expected to cooperate with him. Whatever you say. Now, uh, about your brother. He was undoubtedly dying as he entered this hospital. I don't think anything could have prevented his death. Well, he was shot in the leg, wasn't he, Doc? Same as me. The gunshot was probably not the cause of his death. Uh-huh. Well, I was only wondering, because if it wasn't, why ain't I dead, too? Your brother was a sick man. Johnny? In order to determine the exact extent of that illness, we'd uh, like permission to perform an autopsy. You mean cut him up, cut Johnny up? Well, it's the only way we can determine the exact no, cause. No, he's had enough. But if there's any doubt in no. your own mind. He's dead. Leave him alone. I'll talk to the chief in the morning. He might ask the coroner to requisition the autopsy. Thank you. Good night. Dr. Brooks. Would you come here a minute? My brother George is quite a guy. He's a dummy, but he's got eyes like an eagle. He can read lips a block away. He can read what people are thinking almost. And you've got big, fat lips. You're a pushover for George. Well? Want to know what he really told me? Huh? He told me everything you and your boss talked about. How he wasn't sure at all you did the right thing to Johnny. How maybe he thinks you did the wrong thing. How he doesn't care whether you murdered my brother or not. Just forget it. But you ain't gonna forget it, Rastus. I did the right thing. An autopsy will prove it. Ain't gonna be no autopsy, not on Johnny. His pals wouldn't like it. Beaver Canal, it's full of Johnny's pals. And wait till they find out how he got killed. And by what? Yeah, I'd sure hate to be living in nigger town these days. You live in nigger town? Sure you do. Where else? And don't worry about the autopsy. Yours, I mean. You're gonna be wide open when they find you. Dr. Thomas wanted in surgery. Dr. Thomas wanted in Morning. surgery. Go right in, Dr. Wharton. Morning, Sam. What's been dropped out of our budget this time? I wish my job was as funny as you seem to think it is, Dan. Have you seen the morning papers? Well, I thought I did. I must have missed something pretty important. Oh, just a little item on a back page. Policeman battles gunman in rain. Policeman Edward Kowalski last night surprised two alleged holdup men, etc., etc. One of the brothers, John Biddle, suffering from a superficial wound in the leg, died shortly after his arrival at the county hospital. The cause of his death was not revealed. Why not? Well, I imagine because the death certificate wasn't filed in time for the story. Well, what caused the delay? The doctor in charge wanted me to corroborate his findings. Well, did you agree with them? I was satisfied that he'd done what he thought was best. Doctor in charge was Luther Brooks? Dr. Brooks was in charge. Dan, this is one of those things that I wake up at night in a cold sweat about. A grain and a half a second. Cause of you? death was not revealed. They'll follow it up, ask questions. Imply this, imply that. 
First thing you know, they'll whip it up into one of those hush-hush things, demanding investigation. Selling papers. Creating opinions. Sam, an unimportant item on a back page. You know what can become of an unimportant lump under the skin. Let's hope it stays that way. Fortunately, there was no mention of Brooks' name or the fact that he was a Negro. And what if there were? Don't be childish. Does the fact that Luther Brooks is a Negro affect his responsibility toward this hospital? Or our responsibility toward him? Now, wait a minute. Don't go reading any anti-Negro implications into what I say. I accepted Brooks here as an intern, and I'm all for him. Next year, I'd like another Negro intern. Maybe two. Why, if anything, I'm pro-Negro. I'm not. I'm pro-good doctor. Black, white, or polka dot. As chief resident, I have no more right to wax sentimental over a bad doctor because he happens to be a Negro than I have to discriminate against a good doctor because he's white, Protestant, and independently wealthy. A very commendable scientific attitude. It's the only scientific attitude. No, it's not, but you can afford it because you live in that vacuum across the hall you call your office. You've got on a white coat. I haven't. Public funds, public service. You think one is the direct result of the other, like an intravenous injection? Do you think all I have to do is to pick up that phone and say, send another million dollars? Do you think schools are run by educators? Do you think the police department is run by criminologists? Do you think the board of supervisors consider your serological lab equipment more important than getting themselves reelected? Why, it took me three months of wheedling, begging, and compromising to get your two hydrotherapy units. With the same amount of money, the mayor could have bought 300 bird baths with his name on each one of them. Hold on to that white coat, Dan. Don't change it for one like mine. Sam Moreland, M.D. <laughs> Means something different now. Means master of double talk. Let's hope that this doesn't start something. You've got a couple of important appropriations coming up against strong opposition. And the difference between winning and losing can be the fact that Brooks is a Negro. Brooks wants you to authorize an autopsy. There's a brother in custody, isn't there? Get his permission. He won't give it. He claims Brooks deliberately murdered his brother. The orderlies tell me he's as vicious a Negro hater as they've ever seen, on the verge of being psychotic about it. Brooks is pretty upset. He, he feels that an autopsy will justify his diagnosis, even to this hoodlum. Hmm. In your official capacity, have you any reason for dissatisfaction with the manner in which Brooks handled the case? No. Then in my official capacity, I feel that the welfare of the institution would be best served by forgetting the incident as quickly as possible. Tell Brooks how much I regret the necessity of rejecting his request. Right. Oh, Dan. You've transferred Brooks from duty in the prison ward, of course. No, I haven't. In my official capacity, I found no reason for transferring him. As a matter of fact, he should just about have finished removing the bullet from Ray Biddle's leg. So that's the slug that gave me the business, huh? Brookin wears off, you may have some pain. We'll give you something for it. I can take it. And stay off that leg as much as you can. Can't afford to lose much more blood. You're gonna come in and look it over every now and then, ain't you, Doc? Doctor, there's a scalpel missing. There are only two here. You sure you had three? Very sure. I can't understand it. it must be here somewhere. Just keep looking, we'll find it. A scalpel of all things. We just can't have one loose in the prison ward, Doctor. Where is it? Where's what? The scalpel, you took it. I wouldn't know a scalpel from a stomach pump. You're out of your mind. It was lying right next to you. You had plenty of chance. 
You took it. You've got it on you now. Give it back. Hey, take it easy. Nurse, can't you get him an aspirin or something? Orderly. Sheriff. You're not leaving this room till they find that scalpel. Sure you got enough help? How about the fire department? What is it, Dr. Brooks? This man has stolen a scalpel. He's got it hidden on him. I want him searched. Hand it over, Biddle. I ain't got it, Doc. You sure there's one missing? I checked out three, Dr. Warden. We've only found two. He's had every opportunity to take it. Miss Blake and I had our backs to him most of the time. The scalpels were lying right here on the instrument table. And all he had to do was... Glad you didn't search me. I was afraid maybe he'd slipped it under my sheet or something. Take him back to his room. Nobody would have believed me. Who'd take my word around here against the word of a doctor? I don't know how it got into my pocket. Well, it's been a long, hard night. You think I'm imagining things. I think you're exaggerating the importance of a pathological Negro hater. His kind hasn't been important to me since I was a kid. I've got a thick black skin by now. But this one thinks I've murdered his brother. Well, let him. You know you didn't. You couldn't have. You removed less than ten drops of fluid. But he's got to know that. Dr. Wharton, they are Negroes who are pathological white haters. If I were a white man and one of them thought I'd murdered his brother, I'd be afraid too. I've got to have that autopsy. It's occurred to you, hasn't it? The autopsy could show you were wrong. What chance would you say? Maybe 50-50? Without it, I'm all wrong. Well, Marlon would authorize one without consent of the family. Why not? He thinks it contrary to the best interests of the hospital. The uh, police record shows the existence of another close relative. Another brother? No, a wife, the dead man's wife. Last time he was booked, he listed her as nearest of kin. A Mrs. Edith Biddle. Where can I call her? Is there a phone number? No, only an address. They had quite a time finding it. Seems she moves about quite a bit. Right now, it's... It's 351 Front Street. Want to come along? Oh, but aren't you on duty? <laughs> By now, as far as I'm concerned, you're a case. My name's Dr. Wharton. I'd like to talk to you. Whatever you're selling, I don't want any. I feel fine. I'm not selling anything. This is important. Ain't it always. Some other time, Buster. Mrs. Biddle, if you just let me explain. Who'd you say? Aren't you Mrs. John Biddle? Nobody by that name lives here. Maybe you'd rather straighten that out with the police. What's it to them? Stop being silly. Open the door. So what, Dr. Wharton? What makes you think I'm Dr. Wharton? Aren't you? He might be. Let's not clown. This is Dr. Brooks. He tried to save your husband's life. 
You mean Johnny died in a colored hospital? Dr. Brooks is on my staff at the county hospital. He couldn't have had a better doctor. Anybody want a coffee cake? It's on the table. Maybe some coffee. No, thanks. Still fresh. I pick them up late at night with the papers. Say he's got nothing in the morning. We want you to know how sorry we are, Mrs. Biddle. We realize this is no time. Your name's Johnson. Edie Johnson. Since when? Since I divorced Johnny Biddle a year and a half ago. So it's nice of you to drop around and tell me you're sorry, only I'm not interested. Now I'll tell you something else. If you came by here to say that the whole Biddle family was dying and this cigarette butt was the only thing that could save them. Legally divorced? Want to see the papers? Thanks, just the same. Well, I guess that's all, huh? I'm afraid so. It's too bad. We came here because we thought we could help us. What's there to help? We wanted to examine your ex-husband's body to make sure he died from the causes we think he did. We're not permitted to without permission of the family. Well, what about Johnny's brothers? They won't allow it. For cash, they will. I'm afraid not. For two bits, they'd sell his eyeballs. You're fond of them, I can see that. They're lovable. And now, Eddie Miller's new recording of In a Sentimental Mood. I don't know why they bother opening the doors. With these walls, I know just who brushes their teeth and who don't. Well, goodbye. Thanks, just the same. Uh, Dr. Wharton, um, Ray, the brother that was with Johnny, is is Ray going to die, too? He's got to be all right. Why? Nothing. Just come to my mind. Ray Biddle thinks I killed his brother deliberately. We want the autopsy to prove that I didn't, that he died of natural causes. So? Perhaps if you could talk to him. How well do you know Ray Biddle? Well enough, why? You seem concerned about it. Because I asked how he was? You'd ask that about a sick alley cat. When you were married to his brother, did you see much of him? He lived with us. Beaver Canal? Where else? Where did you live before you got married? Where else? Next door to the Biddles, all my life. My folks and their folks got loaded together every Saturday night. Must have been fun for you kids. A million laughs. Just like having three brothers. Just like it. Look, if you don't mind, I gotta get dressed now. Are you going to work? I work nights. What? I'm a car hop and a drive-in. Anything wrong with that? No, nothing at all. It's none of your business what I do. It's a respectable job and I pay my own way. And you're not living in Beaver Canal anymore. Yeah, I've come up in the world. I used to live in a sewer, now I live in a swamp. How do those babes do it in the movies? By now I ought to be married to the governor and paying blackmail so he don't find out I once lived in Beaver Canal. The point is you got out. Five blocks away. Five million blocks, what's the difference? You hate Beaver Canal. You hate what it stands for. You talk like I was a poet or a professor. I found an open manhole and I crawled out of a sewer, wouldn't anybody? Ray Biddle wouldn't. He likes Beaver Canal. He likes what it stands for. I don't even know what that means, stands for. There's no difference in people except the size of the tips. Drunks are drunk and a pass is a pass if it's a Ford or a Cadillac. Let's stick to Beaver Canal and Ray Biddle. You stick to him. Dr. Brooks asked you a question. It was 50 questions ago. Beaver Canal hates Negroes, and so does Ray Biddle. His only reason for refusing the autopsy is because Dr. Brooks is a Negro. And he wants to think that he murdered his brother. There's no difference in people, you say. Will you help us? Will you talk to him? An autopsy will give me the chance I need to prove I didn't kill his brother. I don't want any part of it. Why not? And I don't want to talk about it.
You sure you won't have some coffee with me? Thanks, just the same. There's no sense getting into a depression about this. I'm not. A cup of coffee and some talk might help. There isn't much left to talk about. And there'll be coffee waiting for me. There always is. Well, then how about asking me in for some? I'd rather not worry Cora the rest about what happened. I want you to stop worrying, too. Am I to go back on prison war tonight? Of course. Thanks for all your trouble. Something came up. How's the leg, sis? Okay. The job's gone. They couldn't wait. Well, standing on it isn't the best thing. Somebody's got to wash my husband's shirts. Out of work six months, and from his shirt, you think he was digging a tunnel under the river. That six months will pay off when he gets to be a male man. Shows a great house for studying books. Plenty of books coming in the door, but no money. The money will come along in time. I want to see it. How long has Cora been gone? Ought to be here by now. She's picking up some whipping cream. Whipping cream? What for? It'll go good on this apple cake. On somebody's birthday? Never you mind. The surprise. For whom? Never you mind. For me. Hey, what is it? You'll know when it's time. Go get some sleep. I won't sleep. Beat it. I think it's silly going all that fuss. Apple cake, whipped cream. Don't hurt nothing to put on the dog. Makes a good impression. That depends on whom you're trying to impress. Well, Dr. Clark, he lives high. Show him that you live high, and he'll think high when it comes to paying money. Dr. Clark, so that's it. Well, ain't that just what we've been talking about? I'm going to sleep. Hey, Lou, what's the capital of South Dakota? Who knows? Boy, you couldn't get to be a mailman. Sure, maybe we deliver babies, all right, but you couldn't deliver no letters. <laughs> Look at home here. Just went to bed. Take these in for me, will you? He didn't know the capital of South Dakota. You know what I said? Boy, I said, maybe you could deliver them babies, I said, but you sure can't deliver no letters. <laughs> Hello, honey. I've been worried. Where have you been? I waited as long as I could to have breakfast with you. Uh, Dr. Wharton and I had to go on an errand. What kind of an errand? A hospital business. You ought to have more than coffee. Let me fix you some eggs. <clears throat> this is fine. Just stay here and talk for a minute. You and Dr. Wharton, you get along fine, don't you? There's never been anyone like him in my life. He must be a wonderful man. And I'm sure he's taught you a lot. But you're pretty wonderful yourself. Yeah. Second Dr. George Washington Carl. And why not? So many reasons, Cora. For one, I'm not even a good intern yet. Dr. Clark says your record's one of the best the county hospitals ever had. That plus mom's apple cake with whipped cream ought to get me a pretty good job, shouldn't it? Let's not talk about it now. I wish I'd been consulted about his coming. Keep it as a surprise. If you do that with kids, it's kind of childish. Well, it was really his idea. I need another year with Wharton. Not now. Let's not talk about it now. I'm not sure of myself in so many ways, Cora. Not now. Clark and his big, fat practice. I never know whether I was a good doctor. Get some sleep, honey. You're so tired. You've worked so hard. Harder than anybody to get where you are. The shoes you shine, the dishes you washed, the garbage you dumped, the food you couldn't buy because you needed books. Remember how you study? How I'd ask you questions over and over. Questions I couldn't even pronounce. Coffee, coffee and more coffee. Slapping you to keep you awake. And when you told me A was your passing mark, not for the others, just for you. You got them. All A's. No wonder you're tired. Even I'm a little tired. Cleaning up after parties, eating leftovers. 
One day off a week to be with my husband. Be a woman. Be loved. We've been a long time getting here. We're tired, but we're here, honey. We can be happy. We've got a right to be. Looking for somebody? Uh, yes, my husband, Ray Biddle. I couldn't get here till just now. This ain't visiting hours. Well, you see, sir, I, I can't come any time I want. I just took an hour off from work, and it's way on the other side of town, and, well, tomorrow the boss says I can't come. Where's your pass? A pass just to see my husband? Go get a pass and come back. Well, Dr. Wharton didn't say anything about a pass. Wharton? Uh, yeah, he said for me to come up here. He, he's the one who told me where to go. It's funny he didn't give you a pass. Yeah, ain't it? Well, I guess he would have only... Well, I was in such a hurry, and, and he was, too, going someplace. Uh, wait a minute. He, he gave me this. Is, is that any good? It's a visiting card. Well, maybe he thought that'd be enough. A visiting card ain't no pass. Look, Buster, I didn't print it up. The man gave it to me. I'll see if I can get him on the phone. Well, forget it. It's no trouble. Forget it. Next thing you'll be wanting my fingerprints and a blood test. Life's too short. Go file a big, fat report on how you kept me from breaking in your jail here and, and tell my husband I'll try to come back again sometime and I'll tell Dr. Wharton what a fine figure of a cop he's got up here. Wharton ain't my boss. Lucky for you. If he was, you'd be out in the rain. Wait a minute. I guess it's okay. Let me see your pocketbook. Okay. Maybe you'd like to search me? Some other time. Straight ahead, room five. Why couldn't it have been you that got killed instead of Johnny? That's your favorite question, ain't it? Only the last time you asked it, it wasn't about being dead. You scum. It was, why couldn't it be you I married to instead of Johnny? You dirty scum. Sounded good in the dark. I should have killed you. You had other things on your mind. You weren't fit to live in the same world with him. I don't see no tears on your face. Where's your black dress? If it was you, I'd sing and wear flowers. All right, Edie, what's on your mind? What do you want? They tell me you ain't hurt so bad. Lost a lot of blood. That's a shame. Give me a cigarette. Matches. Tell me something. Who's they? The head doctor, Wharton. You go to see him? He came to see me. He and the... Dr. Brooks. Well, now, that was real nice. They don't always do that. Why won't you let him examine Johnny's body? Ah, so that's why you're here, huh? Well, why won't you let him? Let me give you a light. No, it's all right. Come over here. <laughs> Let me go. What are you scared of? I can't move. There's cops all around. After all this time, you won't even sit for a minute. That's better. Edie, listen to me. I've done too much What we did already. to Johnny, we did together. He didn't know. It didn't hurt him. I know. I'll always know. And how are you going to make it up to him? You know what they do, Edie, when they examine a dead body? They cut it in pieces. They, they chop it up like it was a hunk of wood. 
the way you feel about Johnny, I guess maybe you think he's got it coming to him. Johnny was a good kid. Yeah, that's why I was wondering. Johnny's body. The body you used to love. They say it's on account of you they gotta have the autopsy, because you think he was killed and they want to prove you because wrong. Because that nigger doctor murdered Johnny. It's the truth, I swear it. I seen it with my own eyes. Edie, sit down, please, sit down. Look, I'm on the level. What's in it for me not to be? Why wouldn't I believe him? Unless I knew Betty. They say you want to think the way you do because Dr. Brooks is colored. Yeah, sure, I know. I'm supposed to forget it. I'm supposed to forget my brother couldn't have a white doctor, forget he'd be alive if he did. Edie, I want to ask you something. If you had a kid, would you send him to a nigger doctor? Would you like one putting his dirty black hands on you? Would you like to be lying here like me, watching Johnny in that bed, shot in the leg, watching a nigger doctor jab a needle into his back, watching Johnny die? If you're so sure, what are you afraid of? Give him a chance to prove it. No, because they won't be looking for anything they don't know. They want to fix it so nobody ever knows the truth. I don't know what to believe. Yeah, I certainly don't figure you're gonna believe me. Why should you? When have I ever leveled with you? Never. And when I do, I get kissed off. It figures. What else? <laughs> Ray Biddle out of Beaver Canal. What was it you used to call us? Human garbage. We stink up the street. Where do I stack up against the great Dr. Horton? When the head doctor of the hospital comes to see me himself to explain and, and to ask he's me for help. smart, Edie. Why would he come? Because he's on a spot. He wants an out of Patsy. Dr. Wharton coming after you with his hat in his hand. Do you think that's his job? And who did he come begging to? To Mrs. John Biddle of the country club? No. To Edie Johnson, another hunk of garbage out of Beaver Canal. Yeah, like me, like Johnny. Somebody he can double talk and push around, play for a sucker. He didn't treat me like Beaver Canal. He knows I don't want any part of it. How does he know? I told him. And he gave you a great big hand, didn't he? Made you feel great. Like you were a nice, clean girl in a nice, clean world. The head of a big institution comes all the way across town just for that. Just to tell you how far away Beaver Canal is. Just to play you for a chump. <laughs> it's funny. What is? Almost the last thing Johnny was saying yesterday. I can hardly believe it was only yesterday. What? It ain't important. What? Just that he might have been you talking. He talked about getting out of Beaver Canal, making something out of himself. How you were right all along, he was wrong. He was going to come and tell you about it. Today. He's better off. Now he don't have to know that you don't get out. Because it never gets out of you. Stink gets in your skin. Oh, they can smell you a mile off. Don't talk like that, Edie. Didn't that doctor tell you you were doing fine? Yeah, he had me going good. He had me all set to marry the governor. Well, what do we do about it? About what? Johnny, about the nigger doctor. First thing, you go find George. You can talk dummy language. He'll tell you everything you have to know. Make him take you to the club, spill it all to Rocky Miller. Tell Rocky what they tried to pull on you. And then do what Rocky tells you. It makes sense they killed Johnny and they're trying to cover him. What else? It makes sense that they wouldn't come to me unless they needed something bad enough. A chump. I'm the type. This way, we can make it up a little to Johnny. You're a good kid, too, Edie. The cream off the top of the bottle. That's me. Autopsy. 
cops see my eye. They want to cut them up. Cut them up so nobody will ever know. Dirty, stinking dinge. You said that before. I'll say it again. That helps a lot. That helps Johnny a lot. Is that how Ray told it to you? Edie. That ain't right to cut him up. Cut him up like... like he was a hunk of wood. They even sent her to talk Ray into it. Well, they... they didn't just put it like that. But that's what they want, ain't it? To cut him up? Answer the man. Yeah, that's what they wanted. That's what gets me, the way they butter up them jigs. What are you gonna do about it, cry? The dummy threw a rock, at least. They kill his brother and he throws a rock through a window. Big hero. He's only a dummy. And what are you? And what are you gonna throw, Mac? Who's next? That's what I want to know. Who's next? I saw a booger the other day on a car a block long, like he owned the world. In the city hospital, we pay for it for niggas killing white men. And what are we gonna do about it? We could all wind up like Johnny. Well? When? Tonight. How many, Whitey? It's after six now. It's kind of late. Maybe I can hustle up a dozen. Hustle hard. Tell him about Johnny. Make it two dozen. What time? Nine o'clock at Andy's junkyard. Andy knows about it. What about you, Rocky? We'll all be there. Johnny belonged with us, didn't he? Yeah. What about you? Don't worry. Nine o'clock. Yeah. We better start making some calls. You hit that stuff like it was lemonade. I'm cold. On a hot night like this? I'm hot. You're a big girl now, ain't you, Edie? I even smoke. I'll bet. If you're gonna get going someplace, you better... We got time. I'm hungry. Get something on the way. I want to eat here. We're all out of your favorite dish. Tell the dummy to go out and get some food and bring it back. Tell him I want to talk to you some more about what Ray said to do. What's he staying for? I told him you was just leaving and you wanted him to stay with me. Being such a good friend of Ray's, I told him he didn't want me to be alone. You getting smart with me, Edie? He reads lips, remember? I'll see you at the junkyard. George will be there. I gotta go to work. Work? If I don't show, I'll get fired. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Does Ray know you're not gonna be there? Does Ray know she ain't gonna be with us tonight? Ray wouldn't like it. Rocky, I gotta keep that job. It's all I got to this live on. This is Johnny's night. She ought to be there. Ray would want that. That's why I said for you to stick close to her. Mustn't get smart with me, Edie. I came here, didn't I? I said everything you told me, didn't I? What more do you want? I can't swing a club. I can't break a head. Rocky, I got a right to live, too! I got a right to live! Dr. Smith, it's called Ward 7. Do you mind taking Dr. the next Smith, car, please? It's called Ward 7. You're late. I know. I've been looking for you. I'm still on prison ward, Lefty. Up. Henry will take you back up. Why, Henry? He's taken over from me. I ain't riding no elevator tonight. Why? Trouble's coming over from Beaver Canal, and I'm gonna get me some. What are you talking about? Jonah just told me. One of the janitors picked it up from Joe to Barber. He flops in a mission over there because he passes for white. He heard him talk. About what? About you and what they're gonna do to nigger town tonight because you killed Johnny Biddle. You've got to stop them, Lindsay. Stop who? Beaver Canal? It won't help. It never has. It only makes it worse. Not for us, it won't. Not tonight. We're gonna be ready tonight. You're talking like a crazy yes, man. Yes, sometimes I do get a little crazy when these things happen. Like six years ago when Beaver Canal came over. You were in school. My kid sister's still in a wheelchair. I got this from a broken bottle. I'm waiting for you outside. Thanks, Henry. Lefty. 
But don't you see, this way you're no better than they are. Ain't that asking a lot for us to be better than them when we get killed just trying to prove we're as good? Okay, boys. I got to pick it up, Doc. Union 64817, Dr. Brooks Personal. Hello? May I speak to Alderman Tompkins? And Dr. Brooks at County. Oh, hello, Mrs. Tompkins. Oh, when do you expect? I'm afraid it can't wait till then. I've got to talk to him as soon as possible. I'm on duty and I can't get away. Please try to get a message to him. Have him call me here at County at once. It's vitally urgent. Thank you. I'm going out. Where? Do I have to say where? For a walk. I'll be finished in a minute. I'll go with you. I want to walk by myself. You mean you want to meet Lefty? I got a right to take a walk if I want. Not where you're going. Let him go. Go on, John. Take your walk. You ain't going to change the world. You've got work to do. Quiet! Quiet down! Quiet, quiet down! Standing behind that eight ball lefty boy. <laughs> now, quiet down and listen. You better do your laughing now, boy. Because if you don't listen good, you ain't going to have no teeth left to laugh with. <laughs> We're going to be in four sections. You all know who you're with. I got one, John's got one, Jonah and Lester. Be quiet going through the streets and not too many together. We're going to be at Boot Hill at sharp nine. They don't know we're coming, but they're going to know when we get there. Yeah! Oh, right, Joe here's got a Navy flare gun. That's our signal. Then we come in from four sides. Any questions, ask the man in charge. Who hasn't clubs, get them here before you go. <coughs> That's all. Hello? Hello, Mr. Tompkins. Yes, it's very important. I'll make this quick, there isn't much time. I haven't called the police because it's something you might handle without them. If there's gonna be trouble tonight with Beaver Canal, they're coming over. Lefty Jones is getting his gang out. With or without the police, Mr. Tompkins, you've got to stop. They usually meet at Lester Peabody's pool room. Right. How you feeling, baby? I feel good. Take 
that, you black crud. How do you like that, black boy? What a crud, baby. You want to hit a nigga? Come on, baby. Hit a nigga. Hit a nigga. What's the matter? You gone nuts? Prison ward. Yeah? Right away. What goes? Right away. Emergency disaster just called for you, Doc. What happened? Race riot. They're bringing them in now. The basement's being rigged for emergency. Have the nurse finish the dressing. All right. Hey, Sheriff. Let me in on it. Is there anything left of Nigger Town? It's the other way around. From what I hear, the boogies lowered the boom on Beaver Canal. How are we fixing nurses? Do what you can. We'll need twice that much plasma. Get after the bank right away. That'll hold till I get there. You're doing fine, Wilson. As soon as I can, right. Gladys! What's the matter with you? I feel sick. You look it. Better get you where you can lie down. Gladys, get my coat out of my room. I've had an emergency call. I know. How'd you know where I lived? Phone book. Why didn't you go to the hospital? I didn't want to. Why not? Why not? I don't need a doctor. Well, then why did you come here? You said you were sick. I am. Not that way. How, then? 
I don't know. Gladys, this is Miss Jackson. Johnson. Johnson. She's not well, and I want her to stay here. Can you sleep over tonight? Be a good night for me to sleep away from home. Try to stay up till I come back. I'll call if it gets too late. You're going to be there all night. When did you hear about it? Like everybody else, when it was too late. I've got to leave now. Gladys will take care of you. You're to do what she says, eat when she tells you, and sleep. I was there. Where? I ran away before it happened. I could hear it. The noise, the hitting, the yelling. It was all lit up like the 4th of July. It was crazy. I don't remember. It was like they were all coming after me. What were you doing there? Feed her and put her to bed in the study. What's the matter with her? She's had too much to drink and she's exhausted. Okay. There's probably more, but we can't do anything about it right now. Well, what about tomorrow morning? Have her come to see me at the hospital. And you take the day off. You could use one. I had one once. <laughs> Feeling any better? I got an idea. You get in the bed, and I'll bring your supper to you on a tray. I'm not staying here. No? What did he tell you about me? Oh, it's a war out. You need food, and you need sleep. What else? Oh, come on. Now, let's get hey, in the Stay bed. away from me. Well, I'm just trying to help you. I don't need your help. Okay. Get in the bed by yourself. I don't want your food. It ain't my food. It's his. I just cook it. I'm not going to stay here with you. I'm not going to sleep with you around. Well, what are you afraid of? Me? Why? You keep your hands off me. What are you afraid I'll do to you? I'm getting out of here. Why? Dr. Thomas wanted in surgery. Dr. Thomas wanted in surgery. Dr. Smith call operator. Dr. Smith call operator. What about surgery? Two waiting up there now, Doctor, and three more ready to go up. I'll get them out of here. We'll need these beds. Dr. Snyder wants you, Doctor. Nothing helped. He was too far gone when he came in. All right, Snyder, help out with the ambulatories. They're jammed. Get a screen. Yes, Doctor. How long has he been unconscious? He just came in, Doctor. Help him that way. Keep your black hands off my boy. Such a man for split pieces three and four times a week. 
So many it's licking with the doctor and split pea soup. With my old man, it was liquor. He never gets home on time, so the soup gets lumpy. And he sure don't like lumps. My mother and me, we got the lumps. Who? When my old man would get drunk, he'd beat up on us. I got a brother like that. Drinking makes him crazy. More coffee? I wonder what makes them like that, like animals. Guess maybe they think it proves something, if they can hurt somebody. I seen a newsreel once where some dogs were chasing a rabbit. They'd tear it to pieces, and then they'd go after another one, and another one. Like men. Not all of them. Some dogs don't either. Huh. Gladys, what do you do on your day off? Like today? Oh, go sit in the park. Maybe go to church. Maybe to a movie. Come supper time, I go somewhere and cook. Where? Friends. I fix them a good supper. Some day off. <laughs> I like it. I'm a good cook. It's something I can do better than other people. Makes me a somebody. Gives me a reason to be alive. Everybody got to have that. Or a reason not to be. Oh, the doctor's come home. Better make some fresh coffee. Oh, he only takes milk when he's been up all night. Helps him to sleep. Working day and night, what's he get out of it? Circles under his eyes. And why does he do it? <laughs> well, he says it's a doctor's job. He says doctors ain't like other people and they shouldn't expect to live like them. Do you know the color of them, Dr. Brooks? Blue? Sure. Why? Gladys, I told you weeks ago to get that lock fixed. Here's your milk. You never pay the slightest attention to what I say around here. I'm getting sick and tired. You're tired, all right. That's what makes you so touchy. Someday somebody's going to walk right in here and grab you. <laughs> I stopped worrying about that 20 years ago. How are you this morning? OK. Did she give you much trouble? We got along fine. Drink your milk. Come in and see me at the hospital this afternoon. I feel fine. About 3 o'clock, I want to talk to you some more. When are you leaving? As soon as the clean up. Oh, I'll be asleep before then. If anyone calls before you go, I'm out. Unless it's Dr. Brooks. Luther works nights. Why won't he be sleeping same as you? Well, if he's asleep, the chances are he won't call me. You know that ain't what I mean. Gladys, I am much too tired. I'll get it. You're too tired. What'd you want to talk to me about? I was wondering how you made out with Ray Biddle. They, they told me you saw him yesterday. can wait. Is there... Is Dr. Brooks in any trouble? Not that I know of, why? It's just that... Well, from the way you and Gladys were talking... Mrs. Brooks. They told me at the hospital you'd left. Well, this is Miss Johnson, Dr. Brooks' wife. How do you do? Hello. Sit down. How about some breakfast? No, don't trouble. I... Sit down. Where's Luther? Luther's in jail. For what? He's given himself up for the murder of John Biddle. What for did he do a crazy thing like that? I stayed with him as long as I could. He told me to come to you to tell you before you read about it in the papers. Start from the beginning. Who knows where a thing like this begins? You should have seen him when he came home. Two this morning, maybe three, I don't know. He'd been walking for hours. He woke us up, all of us. He's never been like that, almost crazy. He hated everybody. Everybody white. Even you. He made John take Connie and Mother to our cousin's house. He said ours wasn't safe. They'd burn it down. We'd be killed. We had to realize we weren't human beings. We were just so much dirt. He wouldn't go to bed after they left, so we walked again. We walked till it was almost light. Then all of a sudden, he was calm. We sat in the park, and he told me he knew what he had to do. That the only thing that could help him or us or anybody was the truth. But it ain't the truth that he murdered that man. Of course he didn't. And that's what he says the autopsy will prove. The autopsy? It's at 4 o'clock this afternoon. He wanted to be sure you knew about it. The autopsy, so that's it. He's had himself arrested to force the autopsy. Now that there's a presumptive evidence of crime, the coroner has no choice. And a confession is certainly presumptive evidence. It will prove Luther didn't do it, won't it, Doctor? 
Mrs. Brooks, any doctor might have treated John Biddle just as your husband did. There is a chance he made a mistake just as any other doctor might have. Luther says that too. Either way, though, he says we'll know the truth. It can be rough on him if it goes wrong. I know that. He's quite a guy. I know that too. Well, I'm going down to see Luther. What about your sleep? I've got work to do. You'll get a fair shake, I can promise you that. I'll drop you off if you like, ready to go. See you later, Mrs. Brooks. Have a nice day, Gladys. You get some sleep. Bye, Mrs. Brooks. Goodbye. Thanks, Gladys. Good luck. That's it, baby. Let it go. They're gone now. They can't hear you. How about a cigarette? No. It's been over an hour. No. A good diagnosis, Doctor. Then you found it. Glioma. Couldn't miss it. Large areas of hemorrhage. Luther. Easy, honey. Yeah, I know, I know. What's this all about? It's official now, Biddle. Your brother died of a brain tumor, just as Dr. Brooks diagnosed it. Says who? I say so, young man. And I shall so inform the district attorney. The spinal puncture was fully justified. Dr. Brooks was doing everything he could to save your brother's life. By determining the intracranial pressure... Ah, stop with that doctor's double talk. He killed Johnny. He confessed it. That's why he's in jail. You were supposed to find out how he did it. Now you're saying he didn't. Well, I say you're liars. You're putting up a front for Easy me. Easy does it. Haven't you figured out yet why he confessed? To force the autopsy, you wouldn't let him have. To prove he didn't kill your brother. Who'd he prove it to? Not to me, he didn't. Perhaps you'd like to see for yourself. How would I know what you showed me? You guys stick together black and white like some kind of a mob. Then bring your own doctor. Any doctor. Anyone you believe. I believe what I see. I seen you kill Johnny. But it's just been proved. It's no use, Luther. You've done everything you could. More than anyone had a right to ask of you. You'll convince everyone in this city but one sick mind. Let it go at that. Not everybody, Doc. There's a lot more like me. And maybe some future autopsy will show us how you got to be that way. You go on back. Dr. Cheney will phone the district attorney and you'll be released on your own recognizance. Then after the inquest tomorrow, you'll be discharged from custody. What about tonight? What about it? Will you want me for duty? Well, no, technically, you're still in the clay. See that he gets some sleep. And starts forgetting this ever happened. How can I begin to thank you two? This was not a high tea, Dr. Brooks. The amenities can be dispensed with. Would you have thanked us if you'd been wrong? Let's get out of here before they change their minds. I'm glad it turned out all right. Thanks. I'm glad for both of you. Thanks, Miss Johnson. Thanks, Miss Johnson. Why don't you take that maniac out of here? Wagon don't come back till half past five. What are you doing here? I just thought I'd come. I'm glad you did. Nice of you to drop in, Miss Johnson. Make him shut up. 
Don't pay any attention. He's a mental case. Whatever happened to Mrs. Johnny Biddle? She lay in somewhere, it's cut in pieces like Johnny in there. I'm more to Johnny this minute and he's more to me than you ever were to anybody. Yeah, you picked a good way of showing it, going back on him and me and your whole life up to now. I never went back on Johnny ever, except on account of you. And as for you and my whole life up to now, Time to close up shop. You ready, Dan? You know, handing Brooks tonight off gave me an idea. Well, if it starts with my buying you a drink. <laughs> right. Next, I inform the county hospital that Dr. Wharton will be unavailable until tomorrow morning. Next, I get into that bedpan I use for an automobile and drive. Where? One half hour from here, in a certain summer hotel at Lakeview, there's a certain bed. One half hour from now, I will be asleep in that bed. Sometime I want to spend a year in that bed. And when I die, I want to die in that bed. What's he hanging around for? It's all over. He likes to hang around. I'll tell him to beat it. What's he gonna hurt? Come on, we'll wait downstairs. Hey, hey, take it easy. It's eating you. Well, got a kink in my good leg. That'll go away. Let me walk it out for a minute, will you? Okay. That's a bad one. get these all the time playing ball. How are you? Pretty good? Not bad. I played some semi-pro. Going to be a hot night? Looks like. Beats me why all of a sudden you want to move a hot night like this. Well, when you gotta go, Mr. Riley, you gotta go. I've been thinking. I might put in new wallpaper if you decided to stay on. Thanks just the same. Johnson. We kept it dark in here because we thought you'd like it better if you couldn't tell we were white. Now I'll turn the lights on. No, I ain't got time. Put her in a chair. Oh. Give me some water. Water! Put your hand on her mouth so she can't yell. I'd like to play games with you. 
but I'm too tired. I got too much to do. And you're gonna do something for me. You're going out with George and make a phone call to your boogie boyfriend. You're gonna say what George tells you. He's gonna watch your lips when you talk. George. Don't be a hero. You don't get medals for being a nigger lover. Just a lousy phone call, Edie. Yeah, you got character, ain't you? You ain't smart, but you got character. Okay, we play games. <laughs> the last of the Mohicans. I've been dry as a bone. We brought our own beer, Edie. Thought that was only fair. You're doing your part. Anyway, you're gonna do it, so make up your mind soon. You could wind up more shape than me. I thought you'd jump at the chance to speak to him for the last time. There ought to be a law about apple fris. After a certain number, it gets to be a vicious habit, like drugs. <laughs> eat some more while they're hot. No, that's five. You know how to get a taste in your mouth with only five. It's because you eat them five at a time. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Sister, honey, I need the exercise. Isn't it wonderful how suddenly apple fritters can become the biggest worry you've got? Ain't so wonderful if you ain't got the apples or the flour or the fat to fry them in. No, really. Ain't no such thing as big worries and little worries. All worries are the same size. Just depends on who's got them. Mother, when do you suppose you're gonna start getting some fun out of life? Most likely when I die. More coffee, honey. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to leave for a while, but I'll be back in time for the show. Who was it? A woman just called from some hotel in Lakeview. Said Dr. Warden's on his way in, and would I meet him at his home in about a half hour? He must be something pretty important to drag him back from that hideaway of his. Maybe he's heard from Morland. Maybe my application. I'd sooner it was Dr. Clark's house you was going to. I wouldn't. Wouldn't you, really? I want you to be the kind of doctor you want to be. Catch me some more of them fritters. I just hope you whistle good and loud before you bust. How'd it go? Did you talk to him? Did you say what I told you? Not you. I want her to tell me. Do you want some more of what you got? Answer me! I talked to him. Horton's house in half an hour? Said he'd be there. Yeah, he'd most likely be early. Chance to suck around a white man. Yaza, boss, yaza. Well, I'll be there ahead of him. I'll be there with the lights on and the door open. Ought to have a brass band. Black laws kill my brother. Well, I'm hot. hot. Open a window, I'm burning up. Sophisticated lady. A new. No more beer. Stop, but it's swollen. It's beating like a drum. But who cares? Who cares about me? Does anybody care if I'm bleeding to death, if I'm burning up, if I'm alive or dead? No. 
Nobody cares about Ray Fiddle because he ain't a stinker nicker. Okay. Okay, I don't need nobody. I never did. Give me some dough for a can. Yeah, I remember. Three, two, four, one. And keep your eye on her. Don't let her turn her back so she can yell. You won't have long to wait. Keep yourself busy. You'll hardly know the time's passing. Maybe you'd like to finish your pack. Where were you gonna go when we busted in on you? Where were you going, Edie? I don't know. Just anywhere, son. Away from this terrible place and us terrible people. We'll finish up. When I get back, we'll all go. All the fiddles together. One loving family. Johnny would have liked that. You like it, too. Don't do it, Ray. I beg you not to do it. You ain't on your knees. You gotta beg on your knees. He didn't kill Johnny. I say he did. You know he didn't. I say he did. You're just saying it because you want to, because you gotta have something to hate. Okay. I just got it in my mind to kill a coon. Argue me out of that one. Guess what and guess who? Okay, if I turn on the radio while I pack. Hospital. Give me the police ward. Anybody up there? Hello, look. This is important. Ray Biddle is at Dr. Wharton's house and he's gonna kill Dr. Brooks. 
Yeah, yeah, Biddle, the one that got away this afternoon. It don't make any difference who this is. Get somebody up there right away. Three, two, four, Walnut. Get somebody up there quick. Check and see if Dr. Wharton is home. If no, check Dr. Brooks. If no, check if Ray Biddle's been picked up. If no, all around, get a squad car quick down to Dr. Wharton's house. 324 Walnut. Yes, sir. in your pockets. Dropping in places, don't you? In your pocket, Sambo. Sambo. I keep calling that. All the time, Sambo. Little black Sambo, like when I was a kid. It's funny, I've been, been thinking all night about when I was a kid. Little black Sambo. I, I, I can't remember the story, only, only the name. Catch a nigger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Yeah, that's what we're playing, Edie. Only he don't holler. And I ain't gonna let him go. But they said it wasn't nice to say nigger. Nigger! 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 Poor little nigger kids. Love the little nigger kids. Who loved me? Who loved me? Oh, Edie, I'm, I'm burning up. Get me some water. No. How'd you get here? I got here. Who's with you? Nobody. Then why'd you come? To try and stop you. In your pocket, Sambo. How are you gonna stop me, Edie? I don't know. 
you call the cops? No. You call the cops, you're trying to stall me. You want to have a talk, Edie? A nice, long talk so the cops can get here? That's kid stuff. You're too smart. No, I ain't smart. He's smart. He's a doctor. He went to college. I'm garbage, remember? Why don't he jump me? Why don't he take a chance? What's he got to lose? Maybe he wants to live as long as he can. Yeah, Johnny wanted to live, too. You're not thinking about Johnny. We're just talking. I, I got no time to talk. Oh, I'm burning up. You're sick, Ray. You're sick in your mind. You're crazy. Maybe, but I, I just got no time. Got no time. Okay, Sambo. This is it. Lay down on the couch. Like Johnny. Lay down. Now, don't turn your back. I want to see your face. Now, get your legs up. Get them way up. Just like Johnny. Yeah, you help me and I'll help you, just like you told him. Let me get you some water, Ray. Yeah, sure. So you go into the kitchen and get it up your right in. I'll bring it in to you. No, you wait there. Be right in. It'll just take a minute. Got no time to talk. Luther! You all right? My arm. Maybe my shoulder. I can't. So bad. My leg. It tore. Something tore in my leg. It's, it's bleeding. It's bleeding hard, please. Let it bleed. Tear it some more. Let it bleed fast. You'll have to help me. To do what? Whatever I can to keep him alive. Why? What for? A human being's got to have a reason for being alive. He hasn't got any. He's not even human. He's a mad dog. You kill mad dogs, don't you? Don't you think I'd like to? Don't you think I'd like to put the rest of these bullets through his head? Then go ahead. I can't. Why not? Because I've got to live, too. Then give it to me. You've got to live. I will, believe me. Happy as a bird with him dead. Please help me. No. Look, he's sick. He's crazy. He's everything you said. But I can't kill a man just because he hates me. What do you want me to do? Take your scarf off. Put it around his thigh. Not too tired. <laughs> you sure you're all right? Thanks. Took the time getting you. Don't cry, white boy. You're gonna live. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.